I want to speak on all of the bills just at one time, because we are clearly all having a broad discussion here today. I also want to recognize and thank my members who have taken the lead on most of the bills that are passing today, most of whom are of color, because in fact what we are talking about is needing change to ensure that in a country that prides itself on saying we have equal rights for all, that we make sure that we have laws that protect us all equally and respect us all equally. And clearly, for anyone who has not been in a coma recently, we understand that literally the country has stood up, taken to the streets, taken a knee, and said, enough is enough. We need to address institutional racism throughout our society. But perhaps most relevant because of the danger and the harm being done is making sure we are clear that the laws that we write as legislators and get implemented through our police departments and our courts are implemented in a way that it's colorblind, even though clearly none of us are colorblind and we have not addressed core racism in our society. Over the last weeks, I have never seen as many emails, calls, and texts from people within my own district, a disproportionately Caucasian district, begging me to support these bills, demanding me to come back to Albany to make sure that these bills get passed. I've never seen the engagement in the 18 years I've been in the Senate on the streets, not only of my entire city, but specifically the people in my district taking to the streets in my district in a peaceful and organized way. This incredible response makes me more proud than ever to represent my community because my community understands these reforms are decades past due and they are demanding justice disproportionately for people who don't live in my community. And though these bills represent progress, they only go a small way towards righting the wrongs our current system infl infl inflicts on African American people and other people of color on a daily basis in our society. Our housing policies, our public health policies, our education policies, our environmental policies, all create the conditions that perpetuate widespread segregation in our country, our state, and our city of New York. That segregation has a direct human cost for individuals and communities of color. We see it clear as day in the disparity of deaths caused by COVID-19 in these communities. Going forward, we must continually recommit ourselves to addressing the structural systemic racism that results in significantly diminished outcomes for people of color in education, healthcare, employment, the criminal justice system, and on many other fronts. Let me be very clear, these pieces of legislation are not an attack on, poli on police officers or any police department. Police officers, like elected officials, are public servants. Elected officials, because we have been given the power to make laws and to allocate public funds, should be held to a higher standard than other citizens. I've always fundamentally believed that since I took this job as an elected official. After all, nobody forced us to take this job. Similarly, with police officers, because they are given the power to make arrests and use deadly force when necessary, they must also be held to a very high standard and oversight of their conduct. That's the goal of all the bills we are passing today and yesterday and perhaps tomorrow. The vast majority of police officers and those who support them should welcome efforts to root out the so-called bad apples before they spoil the whole barrel because we all need a civil society that we can live in in peace where we can respect each other, where legitimate protest 
is allowed and encouraged, I repeat, encouraged. We need a court system that recognizes habeas corpus, which right now apparently we have a few problems with as well in this state and with a few judges who don't seem to understand the right to arraignment and habeas corpus. We all need to do better. So I am very proud, despite the controversy some seem to believe come with these bills. I am very proud to be part of a history that will reflect my support for this legislation, my vote for this legislation, my vote for this entire package. Again, I want to thank the lead sponsors for their incredible work. And I want to thank Andrea Stewart Cousins, our leader in the Senate, because I'm quite sure these bills would not be passing today or have ever hit the floor of the Senate if we did not have a leader named Andrea Stewart Cousins. Thank you, Mr. President.